Hi, I'm Troy with TrailerButler.com, and this video I am going to talk about the very personal reasons of why Trailer Butler uh, exists today. And this is a, a very personal, uh, you know, emotional story for me of, of why I'm here today really giving this video or talking on this video. Um, I will make this video as, as short and concise as I can uh, while touching on all of the uh, Im important things really of, uh, of why we're here today. So back in 2004 approximately, I was backing a trailer into a storage facility as a, a toy hauler um, and in Las Vegas. And the only thing really that, that I could picture was on a holiday weekend on 4th of July on Halloween or something, which is big for the people that go out to the dunes and stuff, uh, you know, the, for the desert people. All I could picture was the chaos that likely happens when all these people are there trying to get their trailers in and, uh, and out. And I thought to myself, you know, I, I wonder if there is a, a product, a, you know, some sort of dolly where you could just pull in straight, drop your trailer, and then move the truck away and then drive the trailer by itself into the parking spot. So I did a quick Google search and probably at that time was Ask Jeeves or uh, I don't think Google was as big maybe back then as it was or as it is now. Um, but there was really nothing available for the, for the end consumer. And I really just kind of left it at that and uh, didn't, didn't really give it much more thought. And in 2008, during the uh, basically housing crisis, uh, you know that, that that our country experienced, Las Vegas was hit exceptionally hard, and I was in the mortgage business, and I was no exception to being hit exceptionally hard. And you know, to say that financially was uh, you know that it was a tough time uh, would would be an accurate statement. And on Christmas Eve. A, one, of my, one of my borrowers, one of my customers, uh, knocked on our door, and we weren't expecting anybody. We were, we were there, you know, our family was eating Christmas Eve dinner, and get a knock on the door, I open it, and it's, it's my customer. And, you know, I'm, of course, surprised. And she tells me, you know, Troy, every year at this time, uh, my husband and I try to help, you know, those who, who we know need it. This year, we, we really didn't know. And she said, you know our financial position. You know, her husband is a, a very big attorney in Las Vegas. And she said, you know our financial position and God uses us as stewards of his money. And we've been praying about it. And this is a gift from God. Please don't say thank you and Merry Christmas. And she turned and walked away. And she handed me an em envelope full of money. And it really, um, it, it really touched me. And it really resonated with me as a Christian of the reason why she did it. And, uh, you know, even taking religion out of it, we can all appreciate uh, a, a kind gesture like that. That was, uh, she went out of her way to come to my house to, to, to do this. Uh, but as a Christian, it, it really resonated with me, uh, the reason that she did it. And so from that day, I, I, I have told myself that I'm going to put myself in a financial position where I can do the same thing for somebody else. And I don't know if it's going to be knocking on somebody's door. I don't know if it's going to be um, providing clothing or, or food for people after a hurricane. I don't know if it's going to be socks for homeless people. I don't know what it's going to be, but it, it's going to be on, on a big scale and, and something that, that touches people and helps people uh, in, in God's name. And that has always been with me daily of, of putting myself in that position. So the, the housing crash, the, you know, the housing bubble burst and all that, I got into the uh, HVAC and refrigeration, you know, heating, air conditioning and, and refrigeration and started as a tech in the field and basically worked up to where in the end I was designing systems and engineering them. And if you've been to Las Vegas and you've been to downtown Las Vegas, Fremont Street, and the Arts District, there's a pretty good chance that you have either been in a casino floor uh, where I have been in some way responsible for the conditioned space there. If you've had a cold beer, cold soda or something, 
a good chance that behind the scenes, I was the one, I, I've had my hands on the, the system that basically provides that. And so, go to 2020, and COVID happens, and uh, the company that I work for closed their doors. And I took that as an opportunity to evaluate on whether or not I wanted to stay in, in the mortgage business, or I'm sorry, in the, in the air conditioning business. It's, uh, you know, it's a lucrative job, or it can be if you're willing to work hard, um, but it's also a physically demanding job, and I'm not getting any younger. And so I, I took a couple of months off and, you know, just kind of was looking at different things. And uh, one night while sitting at my sister's house with, with my sister and her husband, the, the thought came back to me of backing that trailer in at that storage facility years before. And I said, you know, I wonder if there's, you know, something on, uh, you know, on the market now, you know, available. And so I did a quick Google search, and there were definitely trailer dollies on the market now in, in 2020. Uh, and you know, just to be transparent, the first ones that popped up were Trailer Valet, Park at 360. Uh, I think there's another one called Toe Tough. Uh, but anyway, there were, there were definitely trailer dollies on the market now. Uh, but the, there was still a, a very important mark being missed, and that was there was still not a trailer dolly that was portable. So I start reading the reviews and, and looking at the capabilities of these other products and I see obviously first and foremost none of them are, are portable and secondly and just as important is that every single product on the market only works on flat ground, um, concrete, asphalt, has to be you know, a, a hard packed level surface. And so I saw an opportunity to, to develop a product that would meet both of those needs, uh, able to, to work anywhere uh, or, you know, to be able to use it anywhere and able to, to be able to use it on most, you know, surfaces where trailers were, were, you know, me as a trailer owner, where do I take my trailer? I take it to the desert. I take it camping uh, at, at campgrounds where there's gravel and, and, and different types of uh, surfaces. I take it to the mountains, you know, and all these different places. And so let's develop a product that works in all those different places. So that night I decided I, I'm going to start this company, I'm doing it. And I went home, I started drawing it on paper, and the next day went to Hobby Lobby, bought styrofoam, and uh, started cutting it out. And you know, came up with the first prototype. I am here to tell you that that first version looks absolutely nothing like what we sell now on, on our website. Uh, but it was a start. And you know, th that's where uh, you know, the, the, the trailer butler basically was, was born and, and the reason behind it is, you know, obviously first, you know, I, I, I have to pay my bills and so I wanted to start a company that, that I could, you know, make money doing. But the, the much larger picture and more important picture is I wanted to, to start a company and I had the opportunity to start a company in which I could help others, um, you know, in, in a very meaningful and impactful way. And that is, you know, the, uh, again, the, the, the short story, and it probably seemed long to, to listen to it if, if you're, you know, still here at the, at the end of the video, but that's the very short story of uh, a very long and uh, personal, um, you know, uh, events that, that happened in my life that, that led us to where we are today, standing here in Ponca City, Oklahoma. And you know that's really the, the second part of, of 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 this company, or the second part of the story, is <clears throat> we started this company in June of 2021 officially, and you know slowly we have kept growing and growing, and it, it the, the growth snuck up on me, and the amount of orders outpaced the uh, our our production ability, and I had a customer from here in Ponca City call in one day, he ordered one of our units and asked me, you know, why is, why is your lead time so long? And I, you know, started telling him, you know, going into all the reasons, you know, part of it was, you know, COVID was, uh, if there was ever a difficult time to start a manufacturing business uh, since I've been alive, I would say COVID was probably the most difficult time uh, because as we all know, getting parts was a nightmare, getting food was a nightmare, everything was a nightmare logistically. And 
that's when we started the company. So it, it created a lot of obstacles for us to overcome. Uh, so that was part of it. The other part was, again, just being very, uh, very uh, upfront, was the, the amount of sales were a little bit overwhelming and uh, we weren't able to keep up with it and didn't really have the resources in Las Vegas uh, as a small company to, to build, uh, you know, get into a, a, a good manufacturing facility that was, uh, that, that wouldn't break the bank and uh, that didn't require a, a long-term lease so that as we grew, we would be able to, to expand. And this customer suggested to me, you know, you may want to look at Ponca City, Oklahoma. And he started telling me, you know, about how manufacturing friendly it is here, industrial friendly. They have a, the, the city itself has a, a business development center and they work with small businesses and, and this and that. So, uh, long story short, I ended up looking into it and uh, talk, you know, everything at this point is, is email and, and phone calls with the city and, you know, tell them what I'm looking for and what we do and, and all the good stuff. And they say, okay, we'll get back with you. And, uh, you know, a couple weeks had gone by and I, I was praying about it in the morning and I, I, I will never forget this day. Um, I, I, I prayed about it and I was, I was basically, you know, telling God, you know, if this is the right move, then just burst these doors open. And if it's not, then slam them shut. And I kid you not, 30 minutes later, my phone rings and it was someone from the, the business development center here in, in Ponca City. And they said, Troy, uh, a building just became available. It's not even uh, listed, you know, on the market yet. We've already contacted the owners and uh, forwarded them your name and, and contact information. <clears throat> uh, you know, wait for a phone call or email from them. I go in and check my email, and there's an email from them with the building and the cost and, and all that good kind, of, good kind of stuff. And it, it was, uh, I mean, my, my jaw hit the floor. I couldn't believe the size of the building the cost of the building. And to me, I said, you know, if this is not an answer to my prayer, I don't know what is. And uh, six weeks later, we were on our way to Oklahoma. We never, I'd never before that point, never been to Oklahoma, never been to Ponca City. And I didn't care. All the conversations that I had uh, with everyone here. And to me, that, that confirmation uh, of that prayer of, of, is this the right place or not, was answered that morning. And six weeks later, we were pulling into Oklahoma and pulling into the, the building that I'm standing in right now. And, uh, you know, now being here, it's opened up a, a ton of, of manufacturing opportunities for us, casting, uh, new equipment. Uh, we have in hopefully uh, three to four days, we'll have our CNC plasma and tube cutting uh, machine uh, being delivered here. They'll spend two days here, and actually that doesn't even matter. But anyway, the, uh, you know, casting with the foundries where there's certain parts that, that we produce here where they'll just be cast, and they'll come to us just pre-made, pre-formed, and, and ready to go. And it, it will allow us to go from our, our current lead time where we're behind, you know, by really a, a couple of months. Um, and once these two processes are put in place, We'll go from this delay and, and, and lead time to having a stand in inventory within probably about three weeks once, once both of, of, of these sections uh, you know, or, or segments come together. So, uh, you know, for, for me, very personal, uh, sometimes emotional um, story to tell. Uh, telling the shorter story is not as uh, emotional um, for me but it, it's still just as meaningful and I wanted to share that with, with you guys and, and and I'll let you know, it's hard to put on the, the Meet Us page, uh, you know, something meaningful of, of, of who we are as, as business, as, as the owners and employees and, um, you know, the, the office and, the, you know, all the things, all the little things that go into to running a business. So, uh, you know, hopefully you're still watching. And if you are, I want to say if, if you are a, a customer already, I sincerely thank you from the bottom of my heart for, for supporting our business and, and trusting in us and, uh, and, and helping us with our, our bigger mission that we're, that we're chasing after. If you're not a customer yet and you're considering it, uh, you know, we, me, I, you know, would sincerely appreciate the opportunity to, to earn your business 
and uh, you know help us continue to grow and help us continue to do uh, you know big things. And uh, you know that's that's us. That's Trailer Butler and why we are why we exist today.